healthy children with the American Academy of Pediatrics on Radio MD. RadioMD.com. Here's Melanie Cole. Body mass index is a person's weight in kilograms divided by the square height in meters. We are going to explain what that means. And our pediatricians starting to talk to their patients and the parents about BMI and what that means for their children's long-term health. My guest today is Dr. Naveen Marotra. He is a pediatrician in private practice and a spokesman for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Welcome to the show, Dr. Marotra. So tell us a little bit about BMI. First, tell the listeners what that is and how is it interpreted. Uh, Hi, Melanie. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to talk about this. A big passion of mine to work on childhood obesity and looking at BMIs. BMI is a term that if you uh, actually have heard a lot about, it stands for body mass index. And what that is, is that we look at the height, we look at the weight, and with a formula or putting it on a growth chart, we can figure out based on the height to weight ratio where that percentile is for that child. So when the child is coming in for a well visit, that's one of the physical assessments that we're looking at. So somebody who's in the normal or healthy weight range, they would be between that 5th percentile to the 85th percentile. Somebody that we start to worry about heading towards obesity, that would be between the 85th and the 95th percentile. That puts them into the overweight range. And then anybody over the 95th percentile that we go ahead and classify them as being obese. So this is a very strong indicator for what, um, you know, how this child is going to be going forward and what okay, we have so, to watch out for. Dr. Marotra, what, what I have heard parents say, and you know I'm an exercise physiologist and I've been talking about BMI for years and talking with parents and what I hear them say is, well, this isn't accurate. It's baby fat. Look at me and my husband. We're not heavy. This isn't going to stay with them. As soon as they get into puberty, they'll lose all of this. Uh, well, there may be some truth to that. So there might be a genetic component where they are... Um, broad-based or they have a much higher uh, muscle mass or much more of a bone mass uh, that contributes to the higher BMI, but we do have to be cognizant of the fact that there could be a big portion of fat that's also playing into it. So we need to be aware and we need to be proactive. We do. So what does that mean? You're a pediatrician. Do you find it hard to tell a parent, well, your your child is, you know, in the 85th and above percentile, so basically what are you feeding them? Because this isn't a democracy. It's a dictatorship in a house. And the parents, <laughs> well, it is, right? I, I don't know if you're a parent, Dr. Marotra, but I am, and I won't bring junk into the house. They'll get it. They'll get it at other people's house, but not in my house. That's my decision because I'm the one going grocery shopping. So what do you tell parents if their children are eating junk? And how do you approach them? This is the tough thing is to tell parents about eating healthy. Well, th- there's, there's a couple of things that we really have to understand and guide parents accordingly. So there's a, a group of parents that feel that their child need, need to get as much junk food or they need to feed their kid because they're out of the house from morning till evening and they want to shower their kids with love, what they call, you know, love, but it's actually bad for the kids. So they want to give everything that the kid wants. Um, Then there's uh, the other extreme that actually will go ahead and understand that there is an issue, and then they'll start to intervene. But what you have to understand is, are these kids, how are they getting access to it? If the parents are buying it, they're bringing it into the household, and if it's in the household, it's very hard to control it. So it has to be where you don't even bring it to the house, or if you do bring it, you make sure that the kids and the whole family understand what are the implications of eating all that junk food. Well, okay. So do you advise parents talk to their children? Now, in my family, I talk to my kids about eating healthy. I don't talk about weight loss per se, because I want them to have a good healthy body image. But we talk about healthy eating, foods that make you strong, superfoods, help you think better, do better in school. And as a result, my kids want to be involved. They want to help me cook and and make these healthy choices. And now they don't even like junk food as much. I mean, they do, but not as much, you know. Um, that's true. Uh, so you have to educate them. And I don't use the word um, diet with my families. And what it is, is we're doing a lifestyle modification. 
they need to understand that this is just a different way of thinking about food, and this is a different way of eating, and it is going to be a healthier lifestyle. As soon as you put that word diet into somebody's vocabulary, they think that they're overweight or obese, and they get very scared that, oh, my God, I don't want my kid to go on a diet. So I think you have to approach it in a politically correct fashion. Um, I've told parents that, hey, your kid is a little bit overweight, and I've seen them break down and say, oh, my God, don't say that to me, or don't say that to my kid, or my kid is going to have you know, an issue understanding this. They'll go into depression. So you don't want to do that. You want to go ahead and tell them that this is a lifestyle change, which is going to help them in their long run. But don't you think parents know? I mean, you can look at a child, and you can look at that the clothing sizes in our country today have gone up, right? And, and, that, and that everything, it's not the same that it used to be. And we have this obesity epidemic, which is affecting our children. They're getting diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which used to be called adult onset and isn't anymore. Are you really gentle with your patients? Are you, or do, do they get offended when you say that sometimes, when you say your child is pretty overweight and we need to discuss a healthier lifestyle now for them? So I I try to avoid the use of such, you know, strong terminology. So I'll tell them, hey, you know, do you really understand what a BMI is? Or do you really understand where we're going with it? And I let them talk it out. And I think the AAP has done a great job in putting this motivational interviewing techniques for us clinicians on how to actually approach approach that subject. So you have to let the parents and the patient be empowered and let them feel like they're ready to make a change. So they need to understand what is a normal BMI, what is a BMI that puts them into a danger zone, what puts them at risk for lifelong complications. So after understanding that, only then can you go ahead and tell them, well, if you know that this is in the wrong range, wouldn't you like to make an effort and change that? And then you go ahead and encourage them to go ahead and figure out what are the things that they can do to make their BMI better. And oh, you have a lot more tech than I do, really. <laughs> I, I'm certainly... It's, it's, it's only patience, I think, because I, I think we also would not want to hear that, right? If somebody comes in and tells you, oh my God, what happened to you? You gained so much weight. Yeah, of course you wouldn't. And, right. So it's, and that's the whole thing. But now with BMI, there's been some controversy. Two children can have the same BMI, but one's considered obese and one isn't. And then sometimes it doesn't, body mass doesn't take into account musculoskeletal weight and, you know, whether you're a mesomorph or an ectomorph or any of these things. So do you get challenged sometime? And, and what do you say if a parent says, my child is not? Of, of course. Uh, I think there is a lot of ethnic, and racial disparities uh, that can uh, cause false elevations or false alarms. Um, And the other thing that we really look at are trends. How is the child performing from year to year to year? And how rapid is that weight gain? And how rapid is that BMI? So those are the things that if you're hooked up with your pediatrician, they need to look at and follow through with it. In just the last minute here, you have about 30 or 40 seconds, Dr. Marotra. Best advice about BMI and the obesity epidemic we've got going on in this country for children? Uh, I think everybody needs to have a healthier lifestyle, and they need to understand eating right, eating the right types of foods, controlling your portion size are a big way to go, um, and also being physically active and learning to exercise and learning to be out instead of being technologically dependent and staying indoors. I think if we can look at all of these lifestyle factors, we will make a change and we will be happier and healthier in the long run. What a beautiful wrap up. And you can see more about BMI at cdc.gov. Looking up BMI indicator and talk to your pediatrician if you think your children are having a little bit of a weight issue or if they've told you your BMI for your child is too high because it's all about our children being healthy. Therein lies the name of the show, Healthy Children. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks for listening and stay well.